Tennessee says here, Texas, he says, can you send me uh, the, the tracks to this address? And so I was just looking at the address, you know, writing it down, and I noticed that it says apartment 220. So Sister oh, Norita yeah. is in her apartment. Praise the Lord. He got her in there. Amen. Amen. Praise your Lord. Amen. And so I'm sure she's probably in there right now. I'm going to just thank God for that. And so I just wanted to share that little testimony that God hears prayer. He yeah. can move you around. He can do anything. And so, you know, we just do the best we can. And the one thing is that, that I noticed about Sister Teresa, she did not have a bad attitude at all. She had a great attitude the whole time. She was trusting the Lord. She was grateful for everything he gave her. And he just kept, kept giving her more and more until we moved her into a nice little home where she can now study the Word of God and have it's fellowship with no Mary looking over here. It's gorgeous here. Well, praise the Lord. We thank, we thank the Lord for that. I just, yeah, we're just gonna keep I just want to say something to everybody. Never lose your faith with God and Jesus. Don't. Man. Don't let enemies get you down like that. Uh, how Amen. how long was it? I, I kind of remember how long was it you were looking for, searching for a private environment? Well, Sunrise Village, a homeless shelter for a month and a half. Then I stood at the Spring Hill Marriott Hotel for five months. And so all together, six and a half months, I got a house. I came in front of the line, and it was a miracle because the second tape was cut off for a long time. Amen. Yeah, and so the Lord got her right in there. He pulled out his VIP card and just walked her right up in the front. So praise God for that. Okay, so, yep. I'm going to get into just uh, the recap here. And so if you remember, uh, we went over going deeper strategy, right? So we already covered all those. We reread uh, chapter 4 and saw that it was God the Father sitting on the throne, surrounded by the four cherubs and the 24 elders and the rainbow, which is the glory of Christ. We saw that there was seven spirits of God, which illustrate the, perfect, the perfectness of his spirit and his seven attributes, which we, we read later. I, I kind of believe those are the, the, the seven attributes that are attributed to Christ. When we saw the 24 elders cast down their crowns and worship the Lord on their faces after the chair of worship, right? And that's why it's so important that we get big crowns, that you hustle for the Lord and you get big crowns because you want to throw your crown when the cherubs are worshiping the Lord and we want to be right there with the with the, with the the elders throwing their crowns towards Christ and you want your crown to make a big noise, right? Because it gives him glory. You don't want it to be a little tinkle tinkle, right? You want it to be kaboom, right? Because that's all from your reward. We saw that the, we saw the top secret document which is perfectly sealed with seven seals. And it is written on the front and the back. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. And we're going to get to that, uh, God willing, Friday. We saw that no one was worthy to open it. And so John wept until the elder said that the lion was worth, right? And so when he later looked, it was actually a lamb that had been slain. Why? Because Christ Jesus is the lion from the tribe of Judah. So he rules and reigns. And you'll see him roaring in passages of the Old, of the Old Testament. And he's also the lamb that was saying he's the lion and the lamb. We saw the lamb of God take the scroll because it was through his obedience to the cross that made him worthy to open the open the scroll. And then lastly, we went over the the, the one of the strategies was type, right? And we saw that Christ is the type of the rock. In fact, we're going to see that rock here again. And so in Exodus seventeen six, it says, "Behold." Because remember, the people complained and they wanted water. And then he told Moses, Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in horror, and you shall strike the rock. Remember, this is a type of Christ. It was an actual rock, a real rock, and supernaturally water flowed out of it. Right? But he, it was a type of Christ. And water will come out of it, and the people may drink. In John seven thirty seven, he told uh, he said, on the last day, the great day of peace, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of this heart will flow rivers of rivers living water. There is the rock again, water coming out of him. The water that comes out of him is the Holy Spirit. In John 4, 10, Jesus told the Samaritan woman, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. 
But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him will become a, in a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. And then in John 13, we saw the actual fulfillment of this. Remember, all these were typed and pointing to him, right? And in John 13, we actually saw it happen. In verse 32, it says, Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with the spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And so again, I just also shared what the Lord had made clear. Uh, this was a few years ago, but he showed me that the reason that that statement right before this happened, it says Jesus said, I thirst, was to show that he was dehydrated. That's why he was thirsty. And so the question when it came to this part, the Lord spoke and said, where did the water come from? And that's true. If he was dehydrated, where did the water flow from? And it was because it was something supernatural that happened there. And again, God showed show me this. It's not in any of the commentary, you know, Nobody saw that. It was just God pointing it out. And I admit everything that it. Okay? And then lastly, we saw all creation worship God. And it says, Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000. That's 100 million. And thousands of thousands. That's a minimum of 2 million. So that's a total of 102 million minimum. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive, here's the attributes of the Spirit, power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. There's seven of them. And every creature was in heaven and on the earth and underneath the earth and such that are in the sea and all that are in them. I heard saying, blessing and honor, glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen, and the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. Isn't that such an awesome scene? That is just like such an awesome I remember when uh, a young Christian, uh, that's why I love the book of Revelation, because you see these glimpses of heaven, and you see God's true glory. Well, it's such we can't sit from words, and the worship that goes on there. And so, okay, so now we're going to go take a look at uh, the, the really short story. This is like a long view right, of uh, the end times, okay, and so we're going to start off in Daniel chapter 2, and Brother Todd is going to uh, read verses, well, now, just so you know, this is, uh, remember the Jews began to, to sin and have idolatry and see people in justice, so what did God do? He kept warning them through the prophet Jeremiah, if you guys don't stop this, I'm going to send you in a timeout, and God kind of cost a lot like our timeout when we're kids. He sent the whole nation into time out for 70 years. He sent them to Babylon. And so that's where they're at right now. And so Daniel was one of the first ones to leave, him and his four, three buddies. And so they went as like youths, like maybe some were 13, 14 years old. They went over there. And so this is what happened in chapter 2. In the first chapter, he doesn't want to eat the food, so they pray to God, and God gives them favor, and so they don't defile themselves. But in this chapter, they're already going to get killed. Think about this. They got taken over from their homeland, from their families. They're only like 13 or 14, and now they're about to get killed. Okay? Uh, Brother Todd, can you read verses 1 and 2? Okay. Now in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. Then the king gave the command to call the magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to tell the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. Okay, so what strikes me about this is that now this is the second year uh, of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, so God raised him up to discipline everybody, including the Jews. But look at this. So this guy was like the, the most powerful man in the world, okay? Right now, there's one world leader who people consider the most powerful person in the world, which would be the American president, right? Now look at this. Verse 2, then the king gave the command to call the magician, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, all the occultists. We saw the same thing with Pharaoh. 
if you remember, Moses and, and Aaron went over there, and at that time, Pharaoh was king over everything, right? He was the most powerful king. And who did he have? His magician and his priest. And so you see how Satan's not, he's no dummy. He's always there where the power of the government is, because he can influence the most people that way. And so we're going to see this. Remember we talked about extra details? As you read this, pay attention how many times God's word calls out these guys. They're always there. They're always next to the throne. By the way, there were many people that I would consider false prophets, but we'll see how it plays out, who said and told the president that he was going to win this election. He was in like Flynn. He was going eight years. They put their words on it. God told them. God told them. God told them. So we'll see how it plays out. But after it plays out, I'll send you guys a video where you if someone already did it with every prophecy that was given, and it didn't come to pass. And so if it turns out that they that uh, uh, Vice President Biden is with the next president, then all those people who said they heard from God would be considered false prophets because the Bible says. A prophet among you says something, and it does not come to pass. You should not fear them because they're no prophet. And so all of a sudden that burst up. Just wanted to keep, keep your eyes on these things. And the president of the United States, President Trump, is constantly surrounded by false teachers. That would include Paula White and the Copeland and all those people. Always surrounded. It's just amazing how quickly Satan gets in there. Just because people say they're Christian doesn't matter. It's what they do. And those guys are all false teachers. Now, they're going to be false prophets when this doesn't come to pass. If it doesn't come to pass, we'll see. Okay, verse 3 and 4, Brother John. 3 and 4. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream. That's Martin Luther. I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. The... Then spake the, Christ, the Chaldeans to king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. Okay, so he gets a dream. He's troubled by it. It's super awesome. He believes it was divine, which it was. God gave him the dream. And so what's so interesting, in verse 4, it says this. Then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic. And so in the original Hebrew text, at that first word, it says, O king, live forever. The rest of it is in Aramaic. Why? Because the prophecy is going to be for the whole world. And when it goes back to the Jews, it's going to go back to Hebrew. But that's not until, I think, chapter 10 or 11. And so isn't this, I mean, only from the mind of God could you do that, where he transitions so beautifully. It says, then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic, and then from then on, it's all in Aramaic. And so what we're going to be reading is a translation from the Aramaic. Okay, they say, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will give you the interpretation. Why? Because you can just make up just about anything. You can, you know, somebody could say, I saw a tomato when he was up against a hippopotamus, and you can say, oh, this is this and this is that. But he's too wise for all that, okay? Verse 5 and 6. Let's see what he says, Brother Donnie. Okay, the king replied to the Chaldeans, the command from, the, from me is firm. If you do not make known to me the dream and its interpretations, you will be torn limb from limb, and your houses will be made a rubbish heap. But if you declare the dream and its interpretation, you will receive from the gifts and a reward and great honor. Therefore, declare to the dream and the interpretation. Wow. How'd you like to be one of those guys? <laughs> I wouldn't. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, isn't that pretty hardcore? Pretty brutal. Pretty brutal. Yeah, it is. But the thing is, that there's no, you know how we're kind of soft now, right? There's a lot of gray mm -hmm. and in between. Not with this guy. He said, look, either you're about to get cut to pieces and all your houses, your families are going to get crushed or you're going to get riches and honor and promotion. What are you going to do? Right? And as I thought about that, and there's no wisdom there. There's no confusion. You know who has no confusion? 
God from you. He made it very clear. What are you going to do? Are you going to believe in my son and receive eternal life? Or are you not going to believe in my son and have eternal life, eternal death? What do you want to do? It's either you're, you're saved, you have the, you're the lamb, you written your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're sealed with my Holy Spirit, you get to wear his name, I got, I got you in eternity forever and ever, or you'll be condemned to hell with no release forever and ever in torment. Very black and white. There's everybody's gonna know on that day that they're condemned if they're you know they're not believers. That God told them over and over. He made it very crystal clear. There's no in between. It's either full on or full off. Okay, verse seven is very sobering. Seven and eight. That's Brother Robert. Chapter two. Chapter two. Yep. Verse seven and eight. The Lord says me this. Once more they replied, let the, let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will interpret it. Then the king answered, I am certain that you are trying to gain time because you realize that this is what I have firmly decided. Okay. Yeah, they're trying to they're trying to delay. I would be trying to delay too. I'd be like, King Walt, let's 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 go to the Starbucks, let's all have a coffee, let's all get something to eat, let's all talk about this and think about this. But he's too smart for that. He said, Hey, you guys are just trying to delay and trying to change my mind, but I'm not gonna change my mind. Either you tell me what the dream was and interpret it, or you're all gonna die. In fact he doesn't even wait, now he's gonna start killing them. Okay, verses nine and ten, Sister Deborah. If you do not lay in a home, the dream to me, there is only one decree for you. For you have agreed to speak Nine and correct words before me till the time has came. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can give me its interpretation. The Chaldean answered the king and said, There is not a man on earth who can tell the king's matter. Therefore, no king nor all ruler has ever had such things of any magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. Okay, right there. Okay, so there, and that part's true. So the Chaldeans answered the king and said, there is not a man on earth who could tell the king's matter. That's true. And we're going to see that, that, that God's going to have to step in here for, for the children, Daniel and his friends. Therefore, no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such a thing. Here we go. If, if, if we could remember the extra details. It's given again. Such a thing of any magician, astrologer, and Chaldean. And how they're all there. These are all the occultists. Where are they at? At the seat of power. Because they're always looking to influence the seat of power of humanity. That's where they're always working at. Just like they did with Pharaoh, just like they're doing with Nebuchadnezzar, just like they're probably doing now. They're there right now. That's why you got to be very leader, very leery of these political leaders. Because the enemy is no fool. Unless you know the true born-again believer, 
you can better believe that they have the demonic influence in there. Okay, verse 11 and 12, that would be Sister Patricia Sacramento. More, <clears throat> moreover, the thing which the king demands is difficult, and there is no one else who could declare it to the king except God, whose dwelling place is not with mortal flesh. Because of this, the king became indignant and very furious and gave orders to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Go ahead and read verse 13 there, sister. So the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they looked for Daniel and his friends to kill them. Wow. Can you imagine? So again, Daniel and his friends are probably 13, 14, maybe 15 at this time. And because they were there in training, now they're going to get killed. They're not a cultist, right? They believe in the one true God. And they're, they were just there because they, they found that they were extra wise, 10 times wiser. Because why? Because they honored God and didn't eat the food that the other people wanted to eat. And so that's the only reason they happened to be there. But see, God has a plan. He's working in the background here. But the one thing I wanted to show you is that Look at the way the, these guys, this is like the top ruler back in those days, 2,500 years ago. See, he doesn't waste time. He's not going to go to, to the courts, and the courts are going to bring it up to the Supreme Court, and then all the different things. He's just doing it. He says, as a matter of fact, now start killing them now. And they began to kill the wise men. And they sought Daniel and his companions to, step, to kill them. Right? Let's see what God does now. Verse 14 and 15, that would be Sister for the Death. Okay, okay. Then Daniel went to, how do you say that? A, A, Ariok. Oh, yeah, Ariok, commander of the king's bodyguard, who had been ordered to carry out the execution. Choosing his words carefully, he asked Ariok why the king had issued such a harsh order. So Ariok told Daniel what had happened. Okay, so Ariok is there, he's, he's, he's a captain, and he's the one that's enforcing the ruler's will, right? And he's saying, kill them all. So he said, hey, you guys are going to have to go too. Unless somehow you guys are able to come up with the dream and its interpretation, okay? So now you can see it. The, 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 it's very tense. All the occultists are all being killed already. And now they're going off after Daniel and, and his three friends. Verse 16 and 17. So when you get in a problem like this, uh, even if it's not a problem like this. But heading problem, who do you go to first? You go to God. That's what they're going to do. Verse 16 and 17, Sister Leslie. So Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companion. Okay, so now... He's like, he's going to go tell him, hey, this is what's happening. we got to get the answer. Otherwise, we're going to get killed, too. 18 and 19, that's for the top. That they might, might seek his mercies from God of heaven concerning the secret, so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. You know, talk, go ahead and read first, all the way down to 22. All right. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise. In knowledge to those who have understanding, he reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells in him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we have asked of you, for you have made known to us the king's demand. Amen. So see how wonderful this is? So the astrologers, they're all running around because now all of a sudden they're occultists, right? Getting stuff from demons, you know, the demons, right? That's what occultists do. They're, they're under the influence of demonic uh, spirits or Satan himself, right? But look at these guys. What do they do? They go and in verse 
seeking, they might seek the mercies from the God of heaven. That's the God of Israel. That's our God. Concerning the secret. So Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men. Verse 19. Then the secret, this is a secret, it came from God, was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. Why Daniel? Probably because he's the leader of the group. He is the one that's most on fire for the Lord. The other three are very much so. We'll see later in the next chapter that they are the ones that they want to bow down to the statue. Daniel wasn't there at the time, but he's working through Daniel. And it gives him a night vision. So it's just like a vision, it's only, but it happens in the nighttime when you're asleep, okay? So Daniel blessed God. And this is his prayer. He says, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. Right? You, there seems to be, you know, remember the Lord Jesus said uh, to the Pharisee, he says, which one is more excited over the forgiveness? The one that, that owes less or the one that owes more? And the guy said, the one that owes more. And he said, you judge rightly. Well, it's the same thing. When God comes through for you, when you're about to lose your life, well, you're pretty excited. And he is worshiping the Lord there. And he's praising God. And he's raising his hands up to heaven. He's saying, blessed be the name of, uh, of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. This has to do with what was revealed to you. He removes kings and he raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals, look at this, praise next to this verse. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what's in the darkness and light dwells with him. So I just want to share something special about this verse. So I have a colleague, and you heard him talk about him. His name is Weston. So he's working on this micro grid project, and it's a, it's a business ministry. The Lord is raising up. And so we were working on this probably about <laughs> 40 years now. And so we're finally getting to the place where we're, where, you know, we're able to secure funding. And so anyways, but about, probably about 43 years ago, four years ago, it had to be, he was telling me that he kept seeing the number 222. And I'm like, 222? And I said, yeah, that used to happen when I was a first believer too. I used to see like, you know, a particular number. And he said that he was researching me where he was saying, people were saying that it's the way angels communicate and everything. I said, I don't know about all that. I wouldn't even waste my time on that. But he was like, kept seeing it. One day he came down and I was going to pick him up because we had a presentation. And so he came down to the Bay Area, and he, he, he just, I just reserved a, a, a hotel room for him, right? And I just said, call me after you check in. And they gave him his key, and, and it was right there. It said 222, and I was like, oh, maybe there's something to it, right? And so anyways, but I just kind of forgot it about it. But all of a sudden, one day, he was at home, and the Lord led him to the Bible. He had him open up the book of Daniel, and he showed him this verse right here. Daniel chapter 2. Verse 22. And there it is. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what's in the darkness and light dwells with him. And then the Lord made this clear that he was going to help him with the design. That he knows everything. And he can do anything. And so that's what we're doing. And on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Sister Leslie and Brother Robert are a part of this. They pray with us that we've been praying and asking the Lord to help. And every time he gets stuck on part of it, the Lord just shows us how to do it. And so we thank God for them. You know, God willing, this is going to be a ministry that's going to be God is raising up in order to finance his ministry. Especially, he made it clear it was for the, uh, the last day. And so we thank God for that. Okay, so now let's see what the explanation is of, of the, what the dream was. So we don't even know what the dream is. So we're going to see what the dream was and the explanation of it. And so, Brother John, can you read verses 24 and 25? Yes. Therefore, Daniel went into Ariok, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He said and said, Thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Then Ariok brought in Daniel before the king in haste, in haste, and said, Thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. Okay, this is so funny how God's word is so perfect. Look at this quote. First of all, Daniel comes and says, Hey, hey, don't kill the rest of the guys. So, our God, 
not their God, our God gave us the, the, the dream and the interpretation. I can do that for him. And so, Ariok, who's the captain, he's trying to get in good with the king too. Because, you know, the king is rich. He, he controls almost everything, right? Everything is in his hands. And so look at the way he says this. Look at the quotations. It says, Daniel came up to him and told him, hey, take me to the king. I could, I, could, I could translate it for him and tell him what the dream was. But look at Ariok. He says, I have found. You see the pride there? You see the false ring? He's saying, I have found him. Oh, I have yeah, found yeah. a man of the captives of Judah. You who will make known to the king his interpretation. See how we can see that? By the way, the reason that Daniel and, and his three friends are in this group is because they were found to be wise, without blemish, good looking, and able to learn. That's why. <laughs> and so that's the reason they're here. We do the same thing now. In fact, that's what Babylon is. If you're not good looking, if you're not wise, if you're not without blemish, you get cast, cast off. And one of the things that I noticed was when I was driving in the Bay Area, I'm just telling you all the tech workers from Google, Apple, LinkedIn, Facebook, they are all young, they're all good looking, they're all graduates from Stanford and Harvard and all over the world. And they don't have no blemish. Why? Because the U.S. has become Babylon. It's just where we're at now. And so, anyways, that's just thing to keep your eyes on. But you can just see it happen. We're becoming Babylon. It's just amazing. But that's what that's what's Christ. You got to have all those attributes. Okay, verses twenty six and twenty seven. That we put it on. The king said to Daniel. Whose name was Bel Belhazar? Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen and interpretation? Daniel answered before the king and said, As for the mystery about which the king has inquired, neither wise men, ponders, magicians, nor diviners are able to declare it. The king. Amen. Okay, so here we go. Look at it a third time now. You guys, are you guys getting that? There's a third time now that they're all mentioned here. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, "The secret which the king has demanded." So wise men, the astrologers. There's nothing wrong with being a wise man, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But here we go. The astrologers. Those are the people that forecast based on. Uh, the stars and their alignment and all their hocus focus. The magician and the soothsayers. The soothsayers are the uh, uh, psychics. See how three times now God has called them out and they're showing us that they're right there at the throne. It's just amazing. And I'm just telling you, this is going on today. We saw, uh, what was it, Nancy Reagan, the, the president's wife, she was in astrology, and she was looking at astrology to set President Reagan's schedule. We saw uh, Hillary Clinton, when her husband was uh, president, that she shared that she did channeling, and she channeled the spirit of, uh, I forgot the lady's name, I think she was a Roosevelt, but she was the wife of one of the presidents, Roosevelt, I don't remember her name. Maybe Mr. Celeste knows, but uh, she channeled her spirit, according to her. And so this is very prevalent. You know, one of the, the this, this evangelists, he does uh, discernment videos, and one of the things he said was very striking. He said, if a nation can't hear from God, they will always turn to the occult. And that's what's happened. And believe me, yeah, the Lord still talks to people. He's talking to people, but I'm telling you, he's not talking to secular people. And especially when you endorse homosexuality, when you endorse abortion, He's not talking to that nation. And when you celebrate those things, like they did, it's just amazing that God hasn't destroyed this nation yet. Okay, verse 28 to 29, that would be Brother Robert. May the Lord bless my lips. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. He has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in days to come, the dream and the vision that passed, passed 
through you, your mind as you were lying in bed there that are these as you as your majesty has learned uh, lying there your mind turned to things to come and the uh, reveal reveal of mysteries showed you that what is going to happen okay so what he's saying is this you when you were lying on your bed you were thinking about what was to come in the last day and so god showed it to you but he never can never never mentioned that why because god showed this to daniel that that's what happened he was on his bed he was thinking i wonder what's going to happen after i die so he's wondering, I wonder what's going to happen after I die. And so this is one of the things. Okay. Verse 30 and 31, that would be Sister Deborah. Yeah, Sister Deborah. Yeah, Sister Deborah. Without hands. 
that means the supernatural. Which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay at the very bottom. So pick the, the, the statue of time. Starts off, and we're going to see it starts off with Babylon. It begins to move down to the medieval Persian kingdom, down to the Grecian kingdom, down to the Roman kingdom, and then down to where we're at right now, which is the iron mixed with the clay. Okay? Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff. The work was part of the wheat from the summer threshing floor, and the wind carried them away so that there was no trace found them. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. By the way, we just covered this. Who's our rock? He's a person. Who's the rock? Our rock. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Right. And so he is the rock right here who crushed the, the whole deal. All of humanity. He's going to crush it all down. All the government and blow it all away. Okay? Amen. Here we go. Now that he, he just told them the dream. Now he's going to give him the interpretation because God showed him that too. Okay, just before today, you got verses 36 and 37. Okay, where, where are we? This was the dream. Now I will tell your majesty what it means. Your majesty, you are the greatest of all kings. The God of heaven has made you emperor and given you power, my might and honor. He has made you ruler of all the inhabited earth and ruler over all the animals and birds. You are the head of gold. Okay. Um, okay. Should I add some more? Okay, no, that's fine. Okay. Fine. So, so what he's saying is this, is it, the, the gold is him, it's Babylon, right? And so that was one of the greatest kingdoms, some of the stuff that there's like the Hanging God Gardens are some of the greatest wonders of the world. They still don't know how they did that. And so that, they're the head of gold, Babylon, right? And so I'm sure that the, the, the city was super phenomenal, right? And because of the wisdom. And you can see gold is more precious than silver. And silver is more precious than bronze. And bronze is more precious than iron. And then iron is more precious than just regular dirt, right? And so you're going to see that it continues to deteriorate from gold all the way to iron and clay. And that's where we're at right now, the iron and clay. And so again, we're not having evolution where men are becoming better, humanity is becoming better, humans are becoming better. We're having each generation. Remember, in the times of Adam, they used to live almost a thousand years. And Methuselah lived 970 years. And as you look at it, and sin entered humanity, continued to, to thrive within humanity, it continued to get worse and worse and worse until people started living down to about 80 years. Right? And so that's what's happening now. Okay, verses 39 and 40, that would be Sister Leslie. But after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours, then another, a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, inasmuch as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything. And like iron that crushes, that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all the others. Wow. That's what we're living at right now. So again, the, the silver is the, the medial Persian kingdom. The brass, the brass is the Grecian kingdom led by Alexander the Great. And the last one, the uh, iron is Rome. And then the feet is partly of uh, artist clay and partly of, of iron. And that's the one that I would say we should all be praying to see what that is, because we're living in these times. And so, again, we know the iron is wrong, but we don't know what the, what the, what the clay is. So I was praying about this a couple of days ago, and I kind of felt like... That, that because it's partly, uh, it says it's fragile, the iron is strong, but the, but the other part of it is fragile. It could be the one world religious system that's being raised up now. It has to do with some kind of uh, demonic things, and we're going to see that right now. Verse 41 and 42, that would be Brother Todd. Okay, whereas you saw the feet and toes, um, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, 
yet the strength of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay, and the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. Go ahead and read verse 43. Um, as, I, as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men but they will not adhere to one another just as iron does not mix with clay. Okay, right there. Okay, so here we go. Now he's saying, he's going through it all. It goes through the iron, and iron crushed the and Roman Empire crushed the other kingdom. That even took over Israel. That's remember in the times of Jesus? It was Rome that was in charge. <clears throat> but now we're at the feet. We, everyone on this call, we're at the feet right now. And there's iron mixed with clay. And so that's where we're at right now. Again, I don't know what the what the clay, the clay is. I have to be something to feel it. It has something to do with spirituality and something demonic. And this is the reason. If you look at it, look at 42. It says, and as the toes, we're not there yet. The toes are 10 toes. And in the very last days, there's going to be 10 regions. By the way, the Europeans are already putting forth a 10 region model for the world. So is the U.S. So is China, and so is Russia. They all have their model for a 10-region world system. And Vice President Biden, he's a globalist. They're all globalists. The only one that's not a globalist is President Trump. He's a nationalist. Probably why they work so hard to get him out. That's what's behind the open borders. Exactly. Because you got to open up these things, right? And so... Why do you think that there was so much emphasis on the immigration? And people going down there with cameras and saying that, oh, that they're, the kids are in cages. And, you know, some of those things could have been done a little better. But this is the reason, because they have to open up the borders. You have to have regions. And if you remember when President Obama was president, he, didn't, he allowed the, the, the Cubans to come into the U.S. He allowed the Mexicans to come into the U.S., but he stopped the Central Americans. Why did he stop the Central America? Because they're not part of the region that they're developing. The U.S. is going to be part of what they call the North American region, which is Canada, the U.S., Mexico, and Cuba. See, now it's starting to make sense, all these different things. Angela Merkel, who was the premier of Germany, called for no borders in the world, period, because they're all globalists. Why? Because demonic forces are right there at the hall of the power, putting this whole thing together. But look at this, verse 43. As you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay, they, who is they? I don't know. But let's pray and see if the Lord will reveal something to us. They will mingle with the seed of men, babies, children. But they will not adhere to one another. Just as iron does not mix with clay. Is that in there? Could it, could it be AI? Could be. It could be like chip, like they're trying to put in people's hands and chip to the forehead, right? The metals don't adhere to one another, right? And so it, it could be a lot of different things. We don't know, but something is going to try to mix with the seed of men, but they're not going to adhere to one another. So there's something different here, but we just got to wait on God to, to clarify this. But I have a feeling, and the reason I said that, because we're gonna, when we get to the book of Revelation, we're going to see two systems come up. We're going to see the political system and the one world religious system, and they're working together. And you would think that it's a political system that's going to roll out the market. But it's not a political system. It's a religious system led by the Pope. Do you know that the Pope Francis, the Pope that's there right now in Rome? He already met with Google uh, Executive. Okay. Right? And so the question is, why is the Pope meeting with Google Executive? And by the way, Google is one of the 666 companies. They have that on their logo. Like right now, you can go around and look at it for themselves. The Google Chrome logo is three sixes in a row. It's just where they're at. We're just in those times. We're, we're not there yet, but we're moving towards those times. Okay, verses 44 and 45 would be Sister Brother John. And in the days of the, these kings, shall the God of heaven set up the kingdom which shall never be destroyed. 
and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all the kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as those saw it, that the stone was cut out of the mountains without hand, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream if certain is certain and the interpretation therefore sure. Amen. So phew we got out of that one. So look at how it is. They get this whole field together, they have the ten kings, the ten legions, all we they haven't even talked about the Antichrist, right? Because this is the long view, right? We're gonna go look at him right now. And when it all gets dark and devastating, what happens? Boom. God cuts out a, a, a rock out of a mouth without a hand. It comes and smashes the whole deal. And out of that stone, here it is. It says, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all those kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. It is much as you saw the stone that was cut out of the mount without hand. There it goes again. Because there is a group of people who are called dominionists, and they think they're going to take over the world with Christian values. That's not going to happen. God is going to do it. And he does it when Jesus comes, not before that. All we're doing is telling people about the gospel, and we're telling Jesus is coming. But we're not for us to set it up. In fact, I believe, and if this stands with the new president taking over, that this was a judgment against the church because the church got involved in idolatry. And what's the idolatry? Patriotism. There's nothing wrong with patriotism. But when you start lifting up patriotism to the level of God, now you cross the line. And God will take away those things. Okay, here we go. Without hand, and then it broke in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God has made known to you, the king, what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain, and its interpretation is sure. Okay, so let's look right now. Uh, let's have, uh, who's, who is this last brother? Oh, it's John. Okay, Donnie, can you read? Uh, go, go ahead and close this out on that chapter, Donnie, 46 through 49. Okay. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and did homage to Daniel and gave orders to present to him an offering and fragrant incense. The king answered Daniel and said, Surely your God is a God of God and a Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries. Since you have been able to reveal this mystery, then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts. And he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief perfect over all the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel made request of the king and he appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the administration of the province of Babylon, and Daniel was the king's court. Amen. Okay, so see how God completely took it? Never, they were chasing him to kill them. And he went in there and said, hey, give me a little bit of time. Let me ask God. and see what he says. And God showed it to him. And so now he's so impressed. He's like, man, this guy knows God. So here, remember, uh, people say that, you know, Daniel never sinned, right? But in one of his prayers, he talked about his own sins and the sins of his people. But here's a, a sin right here. It's kind of it's kind of veiled. Verse 46, Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and caught things before Daniel. And so that shouldn't happen. Daniel shouldn't allow that to happen. And commanded that they should present offerings and incense to him. That, you can't do that. He should have known better. Well, I mean, he was just a kid. I'm sure he was just traumatized by the whole deal. But that's it. You can't do that. And I shared this before. But when we go to India, and you can we go, the first thing they would tell us, hey, they're going to try to touch your feet if you pray for them. Don't let them do that, because that's, that's like a like veneration, and that's only for God. And so we knew. When people started bowing down, we'd pick them up right away. We know, don't, don't bow to me. Don't do that. God doesn't like that. You give all the glory and all the honor and all the praise to God Almighty. 
And so it's just the way that they've been brought up. And so you have to, you have to show them. You have to literally grab them and say, don't do that. Oh, and, and so Brother again, Jesse, the Apostle Paul did that too. When the Greeks and the other people came up and um, bowed down before Paul, Paul said not to worship them. And so did the angel in Revelation. Amen. Yeah, that, that's all true. Yeah. Um, I got a question here to just keep going through my head on this because um, with never, never, King Nebuchadnezzar knew God already in the past because, well, not really knew him, but didn't he, when he when Nebuchadnezzar conquered, um, I forgot what it was, and then he ended up killing the king, and then didn't he let Jeremiah loose? Got him out of the pit? Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he passed the battle. I'm sure that was because God was working through him. He was right? working through him. Yeah, but he didn't know him personally, not till chapter four did he come to know him personally. Okay. In fact, he keeps calling him, he keeps calling, he changes Daniel's name to Belteshar after the name of his God. He keeps saying, oh, your okay. God, but he, he, but he calls him Belteshar after the name of his God. But don't worry, God will humble him, and he'll save his soul, I really believe it. In fact, in yeah, one of the I in Jeremiah, he calls him my servant. Maybe can oh, answer yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so now let's, oh, let's all move. So we just saw now the, the whole history, 2,500 years, right? From Babylon to where we're at right now. Not to the very end, because we haven't set the 10 kings yet. Okay, so now let's, we're going to get a little closer view of, of the feast. Okay, so let's all move over to Daniel chapter 7, and I'm just going to read this for time's sake here, okay? So that's like three chapters to the right. Daniel chapter 7. Okay, everybody there? Say amen. 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 Okay. One more. Amen. Amen. Okay, here we go. So you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta watch this, okay? Here we go. In the first year of Belteshazzar, that's the name that, that they gave him. That's not, this is Daniel. In the Babylon, Daniel had a dream. In the first year of Belshazzar, the king of Babylon. Okay, yeah, okay, no, this is uh, this is the other king that came after Daniel. Daniel had a dream and visions of his head while on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream, telling the main fact. So these are only the main facts. Daniel spoke, saying, "I saw in my vision at night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. That's the sea of humanity." And the four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from one another. The first one was like a lion. By the way, the symbol of Great Britain is the lion. And had eagle's wings. I watched till its wings were plucked off. Who's the symbol? Who, whose symbol is the eagle? America. America. So there we go. This lion, which is Great Britain, has eagles with America, and those eagles are the first off because America came from Great Britain and became its own nation. I watched till his wings were plucked off, and he was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man. And a man's heart was given it. And suddenly another feet, a second, like a bear. It was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said to it, thus, a wise devour much flesh. Okay, whose symbol is the bear? Russia. Russia, that's right. After this, I looked, and there was another, like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. Okay, this is a hard one. Does anybody know whose symbol is the leopard? Germany? Germany. Yeah, it is Germany. Oh, God, you knew that. I don't know if that was you or the Holy Spirit, but yes, it, 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 it's Germany. Now, here it is. Remember this one? Remember the lion has the wings of an eagle? Well, this one has the wings of a rooster. Does anybody, yeah, does anybody know who the, the, the symbol of the rooster is? France? Mexico? It's France. So here we have a leopard represented by Germany. It has four heads, and and and, and its wings are France. And France and Germany are always kind of getting together. 
So we're going to see that, especially in the last time. But what's interesting is that the leopard has four heads. And so, again, there was a guy, he just passed away. His name was Irving Baxter, and he brought this stuff. And I really believe the Lord led me to him. The four heads represent the, the, the first wife, the second wife, the third wife, which is World War II, and the fourth wife, which has not come to pass yet. Okay? Verse 7. After this, I saw the night making and behold a fourth beast. Dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trapping the resident with its feet. Now, this is the same thing as the statue, okay? But we saw it as, because man sees man kingdoms as, as glorious, but God doesn't see it that way. God sees it as all peace. This is God's perspective. He's, and that's just the same. You guys think it's so beautiful, you guys have all these different things, but in my eyes, it's just an animal. Peace, tearing each other apart. Okay? It had iron teeth, it was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trampling the words to do in its teeth. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had, here we go, remember the ten, the ten toes? Here it is. And it had ten horns. Horns are always a picture of power. I was considering the horns, there was another horn, a little horn, going up among them, before whom three of the first horns were cut out by the roof. And there in this horn were eyes, like the eyes of a man, and a, of a, and a mouth speaking pompous words. That's the Antichrist. So from those ten kings, there's going to be another one that comes. And he's going to take out three of them. And that one is going to be the Antichrist. He's the one that's going to speak of, of, uh, against the God of heaven. He has pompous words and blasphemous mouth. And we're going to see him start going after the Jews here in a little bit. Okay? By the way, just a little point. I'm not going to, I'm just going to tell you. There's a world leader right now that is part of one of these nations we just mentioned who is very small in stature. And his name is Emmanuel. And so I keep my eyes on him, that guy. Anybody know who that is, by the way? French president. Emmanuel Macron. Yeah. 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 The president of France. Okay. So all this is all bad. All bad here. We're seeing this, okay? But then what happens? Dun, dun, dun. I love this part. This is my favorite name for God. I watched till thrones were put in place. And here we go. This is my favorite name for God. And the ancient of days was seen. His garment was as white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. That means it's nothing but holiness and purity. His throne was fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire, and a fiery steam issued out. Can you tell he's a little upset? He is that. And now he's taking his throne. And fiery steam issued and came forth from before him. In Ezekiel 46, you see the throne of God, the temple, water's coming out. Why? Because Christ is here, and he's already destroyed these things. But at this time, God the Father is here on his throne, and he is angry. And came forth from before him. A thousand ministered to him. A thousand thousand. That's a, there's the two million again, minimum two million. And ten thousand times, ten thousand stood before him. That's a hundred million. Here they are again. 102 minimum angels surrounded the throne. The court was seated, boom, and the books were open. Now he's going to rule. Praise God. Oh, you know God does that? He, allow, he allows it all to fall apart. So we can say, God, we had it. We, we can run ourselves. No, you can't run yourself. You're about to kill yourself. Remember, the Lord Jesus said, if it wasn't for the elect, the days were short because of the elect. Otherwise, then no flesh would, re would remain. In other words, we'd kill each other. Back 2,000 years ago, they're like, how can we all kill each other? Well, now we got nuclear weapons. And so God himself has to reduce the, 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 the number of, the, reduce the days in order so we don't kill each other. Okay, here it is. Verse 11. I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. This is the Antichrist. 
I want to the feast. Well, by the way, I just have to throw this in here. Brother Todd shared this. The Lord gave him a vision. He showed him uh, the aftermath of World War III. And he showed him the, the complete homelessness and despair and hunger. And then he said this comment. He said, the Antichrist is going to make uh, Hitler look like a Boy Scout. This is him. I want then, because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking, I want till the beast was slain, that's the Antichrist, and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. And for, as for the rest of the beast, those of the kingdom, right, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were for long, those of the nations, for a season. So God's going to allow Germany, Russia, England, and, and possibly the U.S. here, okay? to continue, but just be just informed. Here's, here's the best part. I was watching in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man, Amen. coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, God the Father, and they brought him near before him. Then to him, can you see how beautiful this is? All chaos is breaking on earth. He's Ten kings came up, one another one comes, and he takes out three, and now he's persecuting the, the, the Jews and the Christians. But what happens? Now God the Father steps on his throne, and he hits the gavel, and he goes, it's judgment time. And then now who comes? Christ comes on the cloud with great power. And he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and the kingdom that all the people's nations language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit with my body and the visions of my head covered me. I came near to one of those who stood by me and asked him the truth of all these things. So he told me and he made known to me the interpretation of these things. Here we go. Those great beasts which are four are four kings which arise out of the earth. But the saints, praise God, of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever and ever. Then I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all others, exceedingly dreadful with its teeth of iron and its nails of bronze. That could be copper. I looked at that word which devoured broken pieces of trampled the residue with his feet, and the ten horns that were on his head, and the other horn which came up, before which three fell, namely the horn which had eyes and a mouth which spoke of his words. See how it comes to life? Whose appearance was greater than his fellows. Verse 21. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the same. Uh-oh. And prevailing against them. Uh-oh. Until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High God. Woohoo, that's us. He said, they're not guilty, you're guilty. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on the earth, which shall be different from all the other kingdoms. Maybe because there's demonic, I mean, there's always demonic influence. Maybe because there's tech. Something like that, that's what I feel. And shall devour the whole earth, toppling and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings, ten regions, who shall arise from the kingdom, and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the first one. Why? Because he's, he, he's empowered by Satan, that's the Antichrist. And he shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, that's us, and shall intend to change times and laws. That's why I remember that was so troubling was that the former administration with the President Obama, it, it was say, well, I forgot his slogan was like a time for change or something like that. Then the saints shall be given into his hands, here we go, for a time, times, and a half a time. So that's a little confusing, but this is what it means. A time is one year, Times is two years, and a half a time is half a year. So three and a half years, that's the tribulation. But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion, speaking of the Antichrist, 
to consume and destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people who the saints of the Most High, all of us. His kingdom, speaking of Christ, is an everlasting kingdom. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. This is verse 28. This is the end of the account. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts were greatly troubled me, and my count is changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. Ooh, that's a mouthful right there. But see, there is a long picture. We saw the picture from the Nebuchadnezzar to the to the ten toes that are were partly of iron and, and clay. Then we saw a close up where those ten toes well, the next one comes out, which is a horn, right? Because in the next picture, it illustrates their horns. And he takes out three of them, and then the Antichrist begins to reign. And so what does he do? He is allowed to persecute the saints. Why? Because it brings glory to God. He goes after us, and we still remain faithful. We're still talking to people about Jesus. And yes, we might have to run and hustle and those different things. But you know what? God allows it. And in the end, he rules in favor of his people, in favor of his son, and his son takes over the whole deal, and his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom that continues to grow, and we are his relative forever and ever. Amen. So that, that's the long view. When we go back to the Revelations on Friday, we're going to see the little stuff that, that goes through all of this. But this is now we understand the long view. That's a big view, right? Any questions? Or that, I know that's probably a lot. Yeah. So if you have any questions, maybe we can I just take. have a quick question. Yep. So like, um, yep. so, you know, it says the bear came out first, and then there was the leopard. So right. like, you ter talked about the third Reich. So like, what, what thing, what is that? Like, well, so I'm not too sure. I know it has something to do with Germany and not and, and the Nazis, but I told them, I think. Let's see, they had the first flag and the, the second, the third flag was, was, was uh, the manifestation was World War II. Oh, yeah. And so, so I got to look at the videos. The problem is I used to lend them out to everybody, but he goes through it all. And so he talks about the forehead, the leopard, and how God gave him the revelation. But it's the first flag. It has to do something with like white supremacy, Nazism, all that kind of stuff. Oh, you know, uh, but, Brother anyway. Jesse, the Lord revealed to me early that like, Actually, Adolf Hitler didn't die, and he has his whole base in like um, um, Antarctica or something like that. The Lord showed me that. Yeah, and I'm trying to build up to that. Okay. Or something. Okay. Yeah. So I'll take a look at. It. I'll try to study a little bit more. But the big thing is that now we got the long view, the picture we see. But the the, the, the whole thing that we got to see is this. That's why that passage is there. That God the Father, and I love that name again. The ancient of days took over His throne. And he sat down, and nothing Amen. escaped him. He's allowing all these different things for his purpose, but in the end, he ruled against against them. He ruled in favor of his people, and he hands over the kingdom to his son, and we get to live with him forever and ever. And the one thing is that we're going to appreciate, because we're going to see how it all, the wheels are going to come off this world. And when Christ comes with his perfect peace and perfect love, this is the most beautiful thing. Okay, Brother Donnie, 